everybody. Um, thanks for joining me. I'm Laura Houston and this is Simple Art at Home and we have great shows every day of the week, Monday through Friday, starting at three o'clock on the Anaheim Elementary YouTube channel. So I have three back-to-back -back shows today. This is show number two geared towards first graders, second graders, and third graders. However, you can be any age to participate in this show and and enjoy it. So before we start, I just wanted to show you a submission, a student submission that we had from last week's show. So let's take a look at um, Shireen's art. And um, she is a third grader at the Anaheim Elementary Online Academy. And last week's episode was titled, Things That Make Me Happy. And I just love what Shireen created. She has herself riding her bike. She's got rainbows and happy clouds, and it looks like maybe a princess and unicorn. So that makes me happy too, Shireen. So um, everybody watching, I encourage you to take pictures of your artwork and email it to me. My name, my email is there at the bottom of the screen, and I will feature your art on next week's episode. And by the way, I have the scroll at the bottom of the screen down there of all the different shows in case you forget what comes up at three o'clock. So uh, today's art lesson um, is geared around the hashtag BeKind21, and we are all celebrating that in Anaheim Elementary School District. And hashtag BeKind21 is, it's the goal that for the first 21 days of September, we are going to do um, kind acts, carry out kind acts. And the idea is that if you do this for 21 days in a row, it becomes a habit. So for today's episode, um, you are going to create a piece of art and it's a secret, but you're going to take a picture of it and email it to your teacher as a kind act. Doesn't that sound like fun? So um, what you're going to need today is, let's see, we're going to need something to color with, um, a pencil to trace, paper, um, possibly something black to outline with. And um, if you want, there's an option of, of using something circular to trace. And you might wanna wait to see uh, until I show you the example. And I just wanna remind you before we start that you can pause this video at any time to go get your supplies. And I will be right here when you get back. So uh, let's go ahead and I will meet you at the table. So we have a couple of activities um, or just suggestions that I have for you today that I will um, help you with. Um, we have this one on the left right here. I'm not going to walk you through it, but I'm just going to leave it up on the screen as an example. So basically, I traced um, like drinking glasses or small bowls from the kitchen, and I just put hearts inside, and I painted with watercolor, and then um, at the very end, once it dried, um, I wrote on it with, um, with a Sharpie, with a black pen. So you have an option of doing something like this. Actually, you have an option of doing anything that you want. I'm just here to inspire you, to give you some ideas. And um, it's always that way with my show. That's why it's called Simple Art at Home. You do whatever you want, and I am just hoping to be a springboard for ideas for you. This is the one I'm going to walk you through today. And you're, for this, you're going to need, I forgot to tell you a straight edge. That's if you wanna do a box around the outside, a rectangle. If you don't have a ruler, you can just find something like the edge of a book uh, to trace. And then I'm going to use a combination of oil pastels and watercolors for this. And I will use a um, black pen to trace. So um, what you're going to need, I'm gonna swap this out for this sheet and I'm going to start on this. So as you can see, I like cutting my papers down because I think they make more interesting compositions. So this was you know, a, a much larger piece of paper, but I like cutting them into either squares or rectangles to fit the art. So I'm just going to show you, I will start with a black pen. My paper, just to give you an idea, 
My paper is about 11 inches wide, because I know it's hard to tell on the screen, by six and a half inches um, tall here. So six and a half inches by 11 inches. Of course, you can do this any size that you want. And I'll just start by tracing, actually, I'm just going to freehand this because I really don't think it needs to be perfectly straight with the pen because I sometimes like the look of hand-drawn lines with art better than, um, you know, using a ruler, because I think it looks more natural. I'm starting with a rectangular box, but you don't have to. This is just my suggestion. And then I'm also going to start by outlining, let's see, I'm gonna use a black crayon to outline the hearts that I made. So I'm going to have three hearts on top and two hearts underneath. Now, hearts are very, very difficult to get symmetrical. So I'm not even worrying about that. You know, that's not the point of this art project. Um, if you are a perfectionist, you're going to probably be erasing and erasing and making big eraser smudges on your paper trying to get hearts perfect. They seem like such a simple shape, but they are not simple shapes to draw. So I like to just freehand my hearts. If you really want perfect hearts, you could get paper and fold it in half. Remember how sometimes you would make valentines? by folding a piece of paper in half and then cutting half of the heart out. You could trace that if you wanted to, but again, I think, especially since you're giving this as a gift to your teacher or taking a picture of it and sending it to your teacher, they like it when it's just free drawn with, you know, freehand. So that's all I'm going to do for now with my crayon. And the next part I'm gonna do because I want it to dry is I'm going to use my um, my watercolor paints. So before I get started, and I just realized that I did not get water in my cup. So I am going to just, I'm just going to be right back. Hang on just a second. Okay, I am back. So, you know, as you know, we are live streaming and it's okay. Like we are not perfect. We are not, <laughs> we are just human beings. Okay, so what I wanna show you before I start using my watercolors is that I like to create a sample sheet so that I know what these colors look like. And as you can see, this is Crayola brand. These are very inexpensive. If you like watercolors, I recommend getting some. But I, what I do is I number these here. So each paint gets a number down the middle. And then I make a sample. It's an exact replica over here. So that when I'm painting, I can see what the real color is. Because look how dark that one looks. And But this is how pretty it looks on paper. So I tested this out. You know, I did this days ago, and I always just keep it as a reference. So I'm going to have it um, off to the side over here. You won't see it, but I'm always looking at that. So I'm going to start by filling in a background. So I'm just getting some paint, and I know that I want to use a pretty um, blue color. And actually, it's interesting, both the blues in the Crayola are almost the same. One's a little bit darker. I'm going to use the lighter one. And I always, I like using blue as a background color because for me, it almost looks like sky in the background. And it's very, just kind of, to me, it's my favorite color. It's a soft, calming color. 
if you watched um, the shows last week, we talked about, especially the first show at three o'clock, we talked about how colors can help you express emotions. So if you're doing a piece, and if you're on a time constraint like I am, I recommend doing the watercolor first so that it dries. Because I'm going to be wanting to write on top of it. Watercolors dry very quickly, but I just want to make sure I have enough time. So again, um, hashtag BeKind21. I believe it is started by um, Lady Gaga. And you can go on the website for more information, but it's the whole idea of just remembering to be kind. And that's what we're doing. We're going to um, give a piece of art to someone as a gift. And that is definitely an act of kindness. Now, behind my hearts, I'm going to draw some soft, I'm going to paint some soft colors and hmm, I'm going to start with maybe some purple. Now you can do this however you want. I'm going to draw a little, or I keep saying draw, I'm going to paint a soft pattern because I really want the hearts to stand out as the vibrant piece. I did draw a very soft line in pencil across the middle. I'm going to stop right now and point it out to you. Can you see that soft line there? You don't have to add it in, but if you want to, it's kind of a guideline for my eyes because as you can see here, I'm, I'm separating these lines of paint in the middle. But again, you don't have to. This is just something that I'm, I thought of in my mind. And remember, the rule to this, to this art show is that you can't do anything wrong. <laughs> this is your art and you can do it however you want to. I'm gonna add some green here. So I'm just gonna create a sort of pattern Put a green line here. And you know, you can take a picture of your art with your Chromebook, or you can ask a parent to take a picture of your art, you know, maybe with their phone or an iPad or something. And I don't know what's the best way that you communicate with your teacher, if it's something that you can upload through Google Classroom or if you can email it to your teacher, um, it's entirely up to you. And if you want to maybe write a nice note in the email and just say something like, you know, thank you so much for being my teacher, because our teachers work so hard, especially now that we're on um, distance learning Teaching, I, I was a classroom teacher for 21 years before I started working at the district office. So I do know it's exhausting, but at the same time, I loved it. But it is a hard job and it's nice, some, it's nice as a teacher to get a thank you, especially an artistic thank you from your students. So I'm just continuing to just, I'm not really planning out my colors because I know that the hearts are going to be my main focus and these stripes that I'm doing are going to be sort of, they're gonna fade off into the background. And again, you might be using crayons for this part. You can use marking pens. Um, you can use anything that you want, colored pencils. So if 
I don't know if you saw up on my screen the graphic. I had some different examples of what it means to be kind, like different things that you can do. And, you know, one thing that was up there was it said, like, give others a platform. And basically, what that means is you just give other people a chance to speak and share their point of view. And just being a good listener is an example of kindness to just listen sometimes to what other people have to say or what their points of view are. You don't always have to agree, but it is very kind to listen because listening to someone shows that you care. And then another example of being kind is you can send someone a letter and even if that's just you know, writing a little, writing inside of a blank card or leaving a little note for your mom or for your grandma, you know, thanking them for, you know, cooking for you or if it's maybe your dad who cooks for you. That's an act of kindness. Um, even sharing your things or donating, you know, if you give some things away to someone who may be less fortunate, that's an act of kindness. And even, you know what else? You can't forget one of the most important things. We call it practicing self-care. Practicing self-care means taking care of yourself. Because if you don't take care of yourself, then you can't help other people. Some people think that it's selfish to practice self-care, but... It's really not. You need to take care of yourself. And, you know, one of the best things about kindness is it's free. It doesn't have to cost any money at all. So that's why I thought maybe we might like doing a, a project like this today. The good thing about being able to take pictures of your art is you can send it to more than one person and, and brighten their day. There we go. You can do any pattern that you want back here. I have one little section left. I think I'll add this color. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to let that dry. While we're letting that dry, let's just let's look at this one one more time. Okay. So, for this one, I'll just tell you the order. Um if you want, you can always paint over Sharpie like this, and you can also paint over crayon because they won't smear or smudge. And if you are painting, you'll want to use paper that's a little thicker than thin um, printer paper, you know, the kind that we use for printing out, you know, in the classroom, the computer paper. That's too thin to use for watercolor because what happens is there's so much water that the, the paper will disintegrate. So um, I try to use a little bit thicker paper. I showed last week that I like to buy cardstock or actual watercolor paper. And so you would, you can outline with crayon and then paint. And then, you know, the last thing I do is I put the, I color with more crayon over the top of it, or you can use um, Pentel or any type of oil pastel. I'm just going to show you these. I think these are the ones that you're familiar with if you've used them in the classroom. I also am able to um, purchase these. I find them online and they're not that expensive. Okay, so I think this one is dry. I'm gonna just wave it over here a little bit off camera. Let's see if I can get it to dry a little bit more. There we go. And just to make some room, I will move this over here. It's a little wet, but it's okay. It'll still work. Okay, so I'm going to start with red. And just to make these hearts a little more interesting, I'm gonna layer a few colors. 
And I'm also going to leave like a little hot spot. Can you see that right there? That's a part that I'm not going to color in. I'm going to leave it white and see if I can get the red to kind of pop. It, it'll make it'll make our heart look a little um, dimensional a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to add some other colors in here in my heart. I think I might add Adding some purple over here to kind of shade it. Yeah. It makes it a little more interesting. And then, hmm, I'm just going to experiment. I'm gonna, I might add a little yellow over on this side. And then maybe, just for a little drama, I'll add a little black over here. And now I'm doing just some rough choppy lines, but you know, it can also be like smudged or softened, but I just I just want the hearts to stand out and now I'm outlining this heart with a black um, oil pastel. So this one I did mostly red and now I think and and just you just got to get used to it if you're using oil pastels fingers will get dirty. So this one I'm going to do orange. I'm going to leave a little area here for the shine and I'm just going to start coloring. Again, um, you can choose any colors that you want. For this project, since it's going to be happy and lighthearted, I'm going to kind of do rainbow color hearts. Here we have some orange. I will mix, again, I'll mix a little yellow over here. And then I might add a little red into this heart. Or actually, I'm gonna try this color. Yeah, this is like a reddish orange. I'm gonna add that. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of black just to make it kind of all pop. And then I will also outline it. Oil pastels are chunky, so sometimes it's hard to get an outline. Uh, you could also use the same technique with crayons. You can do exactly what I'm doing with crayons. So there we have red, orange. Let's make, I'm gonna make a yellow heart next. I'm gonna, I don't know if you'll see this. I'm outlining that so that I leave a little bright, shiny hot spot. And then with the yellow, I'm thinking right now, like what kinds of highlights I want to put in my yellow. I might add, how about a little orange? Like a little orange highlight in here. You don't have to add these other layers of colors, but I just think sometimes it looks more interesting to layer some colors in like that. I might smear this one just a little bit. Let's see how that looks. And I'll add some black. I think with all of them, I'll put a little black in it because I do have black in other parts of this piece of art. Okay, and then we have red, orange, yellow. Why don't I make this one green? So I'll start with a lighter green. If you have two shades, start with the lighter color so that you can always layer the darker color on top of it. So there we have some, some green, and I'm gonna layer some darker green in it for interest. Okay, I'm gonna add some black into it. Get, you can kind of see the pattern that I'm doing. I'm gonna outline. There we go, and one more. Blue, my favorite color. Do a little hot spot. And then remember, if I'm going too fast, which I know I am going fast because I'm trying to keep on my schedule, you can always pause this video and or watch it again. I'm going to add, where's my darker blue? Oh, here, it's over here. I add a darker blue in here. Yeah, you can always rewatch it again. That's the beauty of YouTube. 
And then let's add some black in it. See, by now my watercolors have pretty much dried. That's why I did them first. Okay, and outline. I think, okay, I think I want to outline this as well again. I'm gonna go over the Sharpie. It's hard because it's this is so thick, but I do like the look of black oil pastels. I think they can be very like bright. They make the it makes the colors pop. And then of course, um, if you want, you can write some kind words. What I did with this one was I said, teachers have beautiful hearts. I'll just hold this here for a second. If you needed to see how to spell anything, you can also look it up on your Chromebook. Look up how to spell to make sure, you know, if you're not sure how to spell the word beautiful, because you don't want to spell the words wrong. And here we have a finished product. So I will meet you back up at the easel. Okay, so we have two finished products here. I really encourage you to follow through for hashtag BeKind21. Take pictures of your work and please email one to me too so I can see your work and I will feature it like Shireen's on next week's episode. But also please follow through and, and give this as a gift um, to your teacher. I'm sure he or she will just love it. It will make their day. Thank you so much for watching. I have another show coming up at 420 if you're really into art and want to watch again. But um, thank you again. And, and let's look at Shireen's art one more time. I will see you later.